motorcycles, just like everything else, just keep getting more expensive. As more tech is added to motorcycles, the base price of those motorcycles just keeps going up. But what if you just want a simple to operate cruiser? You don't need all the latest electronics or riding aids. You just want a good, affordable motorcycle that's fast enough for the highway and yet easy to operate in town, and you don't want to break the bank getting it. During the winter months is when a lot of riders start considering getting something new for the next spring's riding season, and if that's you and you're looking to spend ten dollars to $15,000 MSRP for a new motorcycle, then I've got some bikes this week for you to consider. This week I want to talk about five motorcycles that are all between that ten dollars to $15,000 MSRP, some of them below that $10,000 MSRP, they each have their own strengths to bring to the table. I'll pick one bike that's my favorite from the bottom end of that price range, and then one bike that's my favorite from the upper end of that ten dollars to $15,000 price range. So in this list, I got two budget options, one bike that kind of dances to its own beat right there in the middle, and then I've got two classic cruisers that help to find that category that are on the upper end of that price spectrum that we're talking about this week. We'll list these motorcycles by the engine size. We'll start with the smallest engine. We'll work our way up to the top, the ones with the largest engine on them. The first motorcycle on this list is the Suzuki Boulevard C50. You know, the C50 has been around for a long time. It's been relatively unchanged for several years. The C50 comes in with the smallest engine size of the five that we'll talk about today. The V-twin engine is at 805 cc's. It also has the least amount of power at 53 horsepower and torque numbers are at 52. It's got a curb weight of 611 pounds, which is kind of heavy, and I think that's a result of its age, considering especially that it's the smallest engine of the five and still one of the heavier. But this is enough motorcycles to get you up to highway speeds comfortably with some room to spare. As far as the curb appeal and turning heads at a stoplight, it's not what the C50 is all about, though it does have some classic styling to it. But it is a solidly built, reliable motorcycle. It's a people mover for someone who wants a no-frills cruiser for under $10,000. In fact, you can get a brand new Suzuki C50 for under $10,000. You can get the new Suzuki C50 for the MSRP of $8,909. On this motorcycle, the standout feature, as far as I'm concerned, is the shaft drive. So it's a shaft-driven motorcycle, which requires less maintenance than a belt drive or chain-driven motorcycles, and it's a nice feature to have on a budget, commuter-friendly motorcycle like this because it requires minimal upkeep and maintenance on the motorcycle. Just get on, ride, and forget about the drivetrain for the most part. You won't win any drag races on the Suzuki C50, but it does offer a great option for a reliable motorcycle that'll get you out on the road. The next bike on my list is the Yamaha Bolt R-Spec. The Bolt is the least expensive motorcycle on this list, has an MSRP of $8,899. For that, you get a 942cc V-twin engine, so a little bigger than the Suzuki. It also makes 65 horsepower and the torque numbers are at 59 and an overall weight of 542 pounds. When you compare the Bolt to the Suzuki C50, the Suzuki C50 has got the advantage of having a shaft drive. The Bolt is belt driven, but by every other spec, the Bolt is the clear winner. The Bolt's less expensive, it's got a bigger engine, it's got more torque, more horsepower, and it weighs less than the Suzuki C50. In my opinion, the Yamaha Bolt is a better looking motorcycle as well. It has a more modern frame and design while still maintaining that classic bobber styling for a motorcycle that still comes in under $10,000. And of the budget motorcycles in this list, this is my favorite one. And while none of the specific features of the Yamaha Bolt jump off the page, you do get a lot of motorcycle for the money, and it's the least expensive motorcycle on the list, but it doesn't have the least amount to offer the rider. Yamaha has always been good, in my opinion, of providing a well-built motorcycle with an impressive feature list at an affordable price, and I think they've done exactly that with the Yamaha Bolt. So this next motorcycle sits right in the middle of our list, and for good reasons. Honda has never been afraid of trying something different. You can see some of their older styles that weren't necessarily a success, but at least shows that Honda's out there trying to do something different. 
And that's what you've got with the Honda Rebel 1100 also, something a little bit different than the other cruisers on the market. The Rebel 1100 comes in at two different models, one with a traditional transmission. It lists at $9,499, and they also offer a DCT model at $10,149. So whether you want to shift a motorcycle traditionally or let the motorcycle do the shifting for you, Honda has a Rebel 1100 that will meet your needs. The basic specs of the Rebel 1100 are a 1,084 cc, makes 86 horsepower and 72 foot-pounds of torque. It weighs in at 487 pounds, so it's the lightest motorcycle on this list. And having a DCT option is just one area where the Rebel is different from the other bikes on this list. The Rebel 1100 also is the only one with a parallel twin engine that it shares with the Africa Twin. You also get ABS, cruise control, and a very low seat height at just 27 and a half inches. When you combine that low seat height with a low weight of the motorcycle, it's an ideal motorcycle for smaller riders or less experienced riders that have a few miles under their belt. The two standout features of this bike, in my opinion, are the option of a DCT. You know, some riders won't want that, so Honda gives you the option. You can save money and shift the motorcycle traditionally through the six-speed gearbox, or you can opt for the DCT. You know, Honda offers that option on an affordable package that reflects classic cruiser styling, but with some modern touches of the DCT. Also, the Honda Rebel is the only motorcycle on this list that doesn't have a V-twin engine. You know, some riders who want a cruiser, it's got to have a V-twin in order to be a real cruiser in their opinion. But like I said earlier, Honda has never been afraid to try something different. Up to this point, all the motorcycles on the list had a starting MSRP of under $10,000. The next two bikes are both American-made, which that may make a difference for some of you. But they both break that $10,000 barrier, but let's see what you get for that money. The first motorcycle on this list is the Indian Scout. You know, the Scout comes in at a base MSRP of $13,249. It has the biggest engine up to this point at 1,133 cc's, makes 100 horsepower and 72 foot-pounds of torque, but it's got a relatively low curb weight of 540 pounds, making it the second lightest motorcycle on this list, but the biggest in horsepower numbers of all the motorcycles. As far as the looks go, the Scout is the best looking bike on this list in my opinion. It's got that classic old school American styling with a big V-twin motor showing off right there in the middle of the frame and due to its lightweight and impressive engine characteristics it's a fairly fast cruiser as well. I've test ridden one a couple of times and I really enjoy this motorcycle. So there's a lot of variation in the options you can choose on the Indian Scout and depending on the color you choose the motorcycle can go above that $15,000 limit that we said in the title but if you want a Scout they can be had for under 14 MSRP. You know, one of the nice things about the Scout compared to the motorcycles we've discussed so far is the aftermarket parts and accessories available for it. You know, this is a bike that can be customized and tweaked to fit your riding needs. So there are a whole lot of options, both from Indian and on the aftermarket. To me, the real standout feature of the Indian Scout is just its beautiful design. It's got that long, low profile look that really adds to the beauty of the motorcycle and then that big V-twin engine right in the middle of the frame just there to show off. But there's one more motorcycle to make this list, and just by me saying the name of this motorcycle, it may make up the mind for some of the viewers. That's the Harley-Davidson Softail Standard. Yeah, you heard me right. There's a Harley-Davidson on a list of budget cruisers. The Softail comes in at 14,399 MSRP, and for that you get a massive 1,753 cc motor, makes 93 horsepower and the list leading 110 foot-pounds of torque, but it's also the heaviest motorcycle on the list at 655 pounds. But that name on the side of the tank carries a lot of weight as well, and some people, when they think cruiser, anything but a Harley-Davidson is a compromise. The engine in the soft tail is the Milwaukee 8, which is a smoother running Harley engine than days gone by, but it still carries some of that original Harley sound with it, and that sound is a big reason for wanting to own a Harley-Davidson to begin with. You know, one huge advantage that Harley has over Indian and practically any other dealer I've 
had any experience with. Here in America, and especially here in Texas, it seems that there are almost as many Harley dealerships as there are Starbucks. You know, I've owned a few Harley Davidsons, and I will admit that I've been treated better on a whole being a Harley customer at a Harley dealership than any other manufacturer of motorcycle. You know, my primary Indian dealership here in Fort Worth over on the west side of Fort Worth is a very good dealership. I've got no complaints at all with them, that particular dealership. But I have been in a few other Indian dealerships and their customers seem to be an afterthought. But every Harley dealership, especially the ones here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, has been top notch in my opinion. Harley knows how to convert customers to family, and it shows in the vast majority of dealerships that I've been to. So if dealer support is high on your list, Harley may be the right choice for you. But if I were to pick one motorcycle from the upper end of this price list, for me the answer is clear, it would be the Indian Scout. Of all the motorcycles on this list, I would say the Scout offers the best power to weight ratio. In my opinion, it's the best looking of all the five motorcycles, and it would be my top choice in that sub $15,000 price list of motorcycles. I also have an advantage here in DFW of having a great dealership, an Indian dealership on the west side of Fort Worth. But if I live somewhere where Indian dealers were few and far between, my choice for number one might change just based on dealer support. From this list of motorcycles, if budget was your primary concern, I could see myself happy with either the Yamaha Bolt or the Honda Rebel 1100. I would opt for the non-DCT motorcycle just personally, and if I had a little more money to spend, I would opt for the American-made cruiser. Uh, Indian Scout would be at the top of my list. So what about you? Do any of these motorcycles tick all the right boxes for you? Which one would you choose and why? Just leave a comment below, make your voice heard, let me know what you think, or if you've got another motorcycle that should have been on this list, list that below and tell me why. Till next week, guys, this is Kevin with MC Rider, and I'll see you on the road.